So hi everyone. In this uh, video, we're going to start our discussion on long run supply. And what we're going to do is we're going to mathematically define what an individual firm's uh, long run supply function ends up being in their long run supply curve, as well as the, uh, the market's long run supply curve, wherein there's no entry and exit. So what we've been tackling so far is in the short run, and we know that in the short run, there are uh, inputs that are fixed, which leads to fixed cost arising from, uh, your, uh, from the use of the inputs. Now, in long run, uh, when we're in the production process in the long run, all costs, are, all inputs are variable. As such, all costs are variable. So we only have a long run cost. And the way that we derive okay, a, a firm's long run supply curve is very similar to how we derive the short run, except that we need to relax uh, some of the assumptions that we've had before. So the long run supply curve of a firm, it's obtained, okay, obtained from a long run, okay, profit maximization, FOC, assuming, uh, Assuming the SOC or second order condition is satisfied when all inputs are variable. Okay, so when all inputs are variable. So again, if you recall, okay, the profit maximizing um, equation or how we derive the profit of a firm is uh, the firm's objective is to maximize profit. So we denote that as pi, which is some function of Q. And this is equal to revenue, okay, less its long run cost. Okay, and this is just equal to revenue. Revenue is equal to P times Q, okay, minus long run cost, which is some function of Q. Again, because every cost that we have now is a variable cost, hence it's some function of Q. And we're going to do the same way that we derive the short run supply. We're going to derive the FOC. Okay, so the FOC again is we're going to derive profit with respect to Q. Okay, derive profit with respect to Q. Okay, and that's going to be equal to if you derive this one with respect to Q, you have P minus derivative of your long run cost with respect to Q equal to zero. And you get the first order condition, which is P is equal to this derivative. So the derivative of your long run cost with respect to Q, that's just equal to your long run marginal cost, long run marginal cost. And that arises our first order condition. Okay. Now, since uh, your long run marginal cost is some function of Q, okay, you can solve for a uh, level of Q star. So we can solve, okay, can solve some Q star, okay, which is some function of P. Okay, so that's our first order condition that price is equal to long run marginal cost. It's very similar to what we found out in the short run, wherein P is equal to SMC in the short run. Now, the second order condition. Okay, that's B is that, um, so that's this one, second order derivative, okay, dq squared, that's going to be equal to, we're just going to derive this one again with respect to um, Q, so that's just going to be the second order derivative of the long run cost with respect to Q squared, and um, this is going to be equal to uh, this form right here. And what we're going to notice is that this form, okay, is the squared LRC over dq squared. This is negative, okay? And if we just do some manipulation, we get, get our second order condition, which is the second order, okay, this one here, this entire thing. This is just the derivative of LMC with respect to Q, right? Because this is second order. So it's the same as taking the first order derivative of the first order. So that's going to be uh, uh, here, that's going to be 
DLMC, the derivative of long-run marginal cost with respect to Q, must be greater than zero. Again, similar to short-run production, or short-run uh, supply rather, it, you must be in the upward portion or in the upward sloping portion of the marginal cost curve, in this case, the long-run marginal cost curve. Okay, and the last condition, okay, is that uh, it's a profitability criterion again. So the additional condition for a firm is that it must produce a positive output and that occurs when um, P is greater than or equal to long run average cost. So if this is the case, Q star is equal to uh, Q, which is some function of P. So the firm will choose to produce if P is greater than or equal to long run average cost. And then Q is equal to zero if P is less than long run average cost. So these are the three conditions that we have. Again, very similar to short run uh, supply uh, to derive an individual firm's uh, long run supply curve. Now, as we have an individual firm supply curve, we can now uh, get into the long run market supply curve. But for this case, we'll discuss first the long run market supply without entry or exit. Okay. Now, the long run market supply, it's very simil similar to the short run market supply in that it's just summing up, summing up the individual firm supply curve, supply curves. at alternative prices okay so say we have uh say we have f firms in the market f firms in market market so our quantity supplied for the market is just going to be equal to the aggregate of all individual um all uh firms all their individual supply functions q f p and this is QSP. Now again, they will only supply if okay, price is greater than long run average cost. Okay. Min, okay, or at the minimum of long run average cost. We'll illustrate that graphically in the next video. And they won't choose to produce if P is less than long run average cost. Okay. Where uh, we have QF. So this one, this is the supply of an F firm, okay? And here we have the minimum of LAC and uh, of a particular firm. And this represents the lowest LAC among all firms in the market. Okay, And what we find is that a very key assumption that we're going to make for this case is in the absence in the absence of entry and exit, exit, so in the absence of entry and exit, absence of entry and exit, the long run market supply is upward sloping. Okay, upward sloping. So that's in the absence of entry and exit. What's this, what does that mean? No firms can leave the market and no firms can enter the market. So the players you started out with, those will be the players that you have now. Okay, so that's uh, the derivation of the long run individual firm supply curve and the long run market supply.